Welcome to another Kong Show, this time coming to you from Morton's modestly magnificent movie mansion with Mr. Morton himself. How you doing, Don? Marvelous. And this time you'll be reviewing films opening this weekend starting... April 25th. And some playing right on through Golden Week. That's right. And what films will you be reviewing this week? We're going to be talking about four films. GMO, OMG, The Last Five Years, Furious 7, and... Cinderella. Worst first? G-M-O-O-M-G. What's all the spelling about? O-M-G is obviously, oh my God, in text speak. And G-M-O means genetically modified organisms. This is an activist documentary by a Michael Moore wannabe named Jeremy Seifert. He's got a good point. He wants evil agribusiness giants like Monsanto to be more accountable to their customers, and he wants labels on foods that contain G-M-Os. But his arguments are unconvincing. They're lamely manipulative and simplistic. They include include making fun of the technical jargon that in Monsanto's literature, he says, I'm not a scientist, kind of echoing the Republican climate change deniers in the Congress. His motivations are fuzzy, and he, he even gives a nod to creationism. You know, things, this isn't the way things are supposed to be. And his leaps in logic are quite jarring. And he trots out whole movies of his kids every 10 minutes and says things mm. like, I wish I could take back the land for my children. Give me a break. By the end, this preachy little twerp ha almost had me rooting for Monsanto. Tell us what GMOs are, genetically modified organisms. Organisms that have been modified genetically in laboratories to make them more resistant to insects and blights and other pests and create a more profitable and abundant crop. And why do you think Japan brought this movie in? I don't know. It isn't being released anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> On the planet? It's Yeah, it's direct-to-video everywhere else. I okay. don't know. It's a small thing. Let's move on. The next film is called The Last Five years. The last five years. You know who Anna Kendrick is in? She's a singer. She's a singer and actress. Yep. Uh, she was in Up in the Air in an acting role, but her, her forte is singing. Uh, she was in Into the Woods as Cinderella in that movie. This is a story of the courtship, marriage, and dissolution of a loving relationship, and it's told from two viewpoints and two chronologies. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, two chronologies. He, played by Jeremy Jordan, is a young novelist. He's finding early success he tells the story in chronological order, from the start to the finish. That's natural. Anna Kendrick plays his mate, a singer, actress, struggling with endless auditions and a stalled career. And she tells the story from finish to start. And that sounds interesting, but how do they tell it? Well, they sing it. Oh. Yes. Every song that he sings is from the start to the finish. And every song she sings to him is from the finish to the start. And they meet in the middle for a, once for a duet. Your enjoyment of this, of course, will hinge on your attitude toward entirely sung films, but the songs here by Tony-winning lyricist and composer Jason Robert Brown are very good. They're intricate, varied, and they advance the plot, and they're well worth a look and a listen. Toe tappers? Some of them. Did you leave the theater with a song in your heart? I left the theater with a good movie in my heart. I couldn't remember any of the particular songs. No, it's not one of those movies. Moving on, the next film is called Furious 7. No one needs a review of the latest installment of an action franchise that started 14 years ago and has a 7 in its title. I guess by now you're either a fan or you're not. That's pretty much yeah. it. But if you judge a film by how well the filmmakers know that what their audiences want, this one delivers. And then it delivers again. And then it blows up stuff. And then it has a really brutal fist fight or two, drives off a cliff a few times, it talks really tough, and then it delivers some more. Okay, so what's the plot? Plot? <laughs> Really? Seriously? <laughs> the, the, movies the movie like this, has to have a plot, No, right? movies like this don't need a plot. I, see. I really couldn't tell you. There's a major wow factor in the stunts. They are choreographed beautifully. This is a state-of-the-art action movie choreography, but it suffers from the what I call the indestructible hero without the cape, superhero without mm. the cape thing, mm -hmm. and that draws away any real tension. When Vin Diesel drives a car off a 500-foot cliff <laughs> in pure confidence that he He's going to survive it is one thing. And then he does it again. The last 30 minutes is pretty pummeling if you're not into the action genre. I like the tasteful tribute to the late Paul Walker at the end. Sounds like a lot of adrenaline. There's a lot of adrenaline here. And what's the soundtrack like? The soundtrack. Let yeah. me see. 
Um, boom. Pow, 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 pow. Screech. Crash. Sounds more like a Roadrunner movie to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on. The next film is called Cinderella. She's back. She's back. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it was not without a little bit of trepidation that I went down to the Disney screening room to, to watch this live action version of the classic Disney prototypical princess picture, the 1950 animation. That's understandable. Yeah, and I coming out, I was shocked. Kong, I was shocked, I tell you. Why is that, I repeat? Why is that? <laughs> I I liked it. You liked Cinderella? I absolutely liked this wow. movie. It was a simple story, well told, and it's just it's just lovely. Hmm. The photography is brilliant, and ditto for the costumes and the production design. The excellent special effects, aside from one dazzling, almost mandatory bit where they changed the pumpkin into the coach, the special effects serve the story here. And the best thing of all in this movie is there's no stupid stupid songs. So you didn't leave the cinema singing what? Get it out, get it out, <laughs> get this song out of my head. No, All right. didn't leave the theater that way. Downton Abbey's uh, Lily James plays Cinderella with a beautiful little balance of guilelessness and intelligence. Kate Blanchett plays the wicked stepmother and she can express worlds with just one raised eyebrow. Uh, Kenneth Brana is the director. He often does Shakespeare, but okay, he also did Thor. Oh yeah, and he's uh, going to be coming here for the opening of this film. That's right. He'll be That's coming right. to Tokyo. Yeah. He's created something old yet new. It's more of a revitalization rather than a reimagining it, which is popular these days. It's pure of heart. It's unabashedly sincere, and it's wildly entertaining. Uncle Walt would like this movie. Did you leave the theater feeling like you fell in love with Cinderella? Let's just say I left the theater pleasantly surprised. A movie for the kids? A movie for everybody. If this cynical old film critic enjoyed this movie, then everyone will. Well said. Don Morton, film critic for Metropolis Magazine. Thank you very much. My pleasure. <laughs> 